everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer. And today we're gonna finally take a look at the Chanel Comet collection. That's what I'm calling it. Um, there was several new releases by Dior, Chanel. Uh, yeah, the, the, it runs the gamut, so many, so many new releases. And this is the first chance that I've gotten to really play around with the Chanel uh, Comet collection. I've done the La Paza, which is the Mediterranean, the Chanel number one, but I hadn't had a chance to check out this collection, which is two new blushes, and I think eight, uh, I'll make sure the right number is down below, velvet lipsticks. And I'll talk about the velvet lipsticks that I picked up. I did pick up four of them. On Instagram, I did swatch them all for you, except for the two lightest shades. So you got to see them at least on my hand, and I'll talk about them today. Bring you in a little bit closer. So as I said, I, I picked up the Chanel number one collection, not all of it, but a lot of it. I picked up um, the, La Paz collection, which I call the Mediterranean collection. Again, not all of it, but most of it. Um, and now this is the Comet collection. And let me show you first the blushes. And these are referred to as soft glow blushes. They are limited edition. So this is different than their illuminating blushes. Okay, so these are the soft glow blushes. And I think you can see in the mirror here with the reflection, yes, you can. See how there's a CC in the reflection, but on the blush itself, there's a star, which is a cool little, it's a cool little trick. I do like that, I think that's unique, that's special. We'll see how long that lasts after I actually start using the product. Um, and that shade is the Pesh Cosmique. That's probably wrong, but. Unfortunately, this week I don't have a chance to, to check out all this, the pronunciations of things. Uh, hopefully, I can I can fix it later. Uh, and then and then this one is the Coral Etoile. We're at toy. There's the CC reflection. There's the star. And they come in a little bit different packaging. They have the exact same you know outer packaging, um, gold CCs instead of white CCs. But the envelope that it comes in the little pouch also comes with a little brush in this type of pouch it's like a little smaller one i never use these blushes these uh brushes that come with them but you know actually i get why like for such for travel that's actually not a bad idea so i don't want to diss the, <laughs> the little brushes if you use them and you like them you know that's great uh and then i just want to mention really quickly the ones that came out with the Mediterranean collection, the La Paz collection, we had Brune and we had Pesh. So here was Pesh and here was Brune. These were considered illuminating blushes. And I've done videos with these, and I'll again today when we're looking at all of them, I'll swatch compare a bit. But I just wanted you to know there see there seems to be some connection to each collection with the fact that one blush is a deeper blush, one blush is a lighter blush etc. Um, and the other ones that I'll compare them to just so you guys can see it when we're done is the illuminating blush powder in this is the Shane's or Shane blush that was released last year. I don't know. I'll be honest guys I used to be really good with dates and know like when things came out what part was what collection and everything the last two years I have no idea. Um, and this is the Pretemps blush um, and this is a blush and highlighting duo. So technically they refer to this as the highlighter and this is the blush, but I'm so pale I can actually use, I can use both as blush. I feel like lately I've, I've become even paler um, because I really haven't been out of my house and it's winter here in New England and it's depressing outside so there's really no reason to go outside anyway. And yeah, I actually feel like my skin is getting lighter. And that was pretty much confirmed when I went to check out the, um, Dior foundation. I know I'm getting off track for a second, but I want to mention that I did pick up the Dior Forever Matte Foundation in a different shade because if you've watched my foundation roundup video, you realize the one end's a little too yellow on me. And I tried out the 1CR, and even that was a little deep on me. So I ended up going with the 0CR, which is a little light, but actually I like it a little better because I can warm it up instead of trying to, you know, like match my neck. So anyway. I know, long way of saying, I seem to have gotten paler. Don't know how it's physically possible, but 
it seems to have happened. All right, so let's take a look at these blushes. Like I said, they have this really cool reflection. Uh, you get the CC in the mirror and the star. And you can see, I don't know what's gonna show up on camera, but you can kind of see the star and the CC if you look at it that way. I think you'll be able to see that. All right, so let's just take a look at the packaging, see if there's anything uh, of note uh, that's new. It's got an 18 month shelf life. It's made in Italy. It's a limited edition, as I said. Um, and it comes in what they are calling a coral shade and a pesh shade. Pesh seems to be popular. I've seen a lot of pesh, uh, peach, uh, the Dior collection and the Chanel collection. So let's take a look at this pesh here. Now, because this is late and it's taken me a while to get to this, I have seen swatches of these before. And from what I have seen, this light one, which they're calling Pesh, is very light. And that really, unless, I, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty pale, guys, as we just discussed. And that's it right there. So it's super, super light. I'm gonna use it as a highlighter. I think it's very pretty, um, but I just don't know how that's blush. I mean, if it doesn't even show up on me, you know, that's that's a pretty good indicator that it's not gonna work. Uh, all right, so let's do the coral. The coral, from what I saw, showed up quite well. Yeah, very bright blush, very pretty. Both of them have a luminescence to them. You know, nice, beautiful, soft glow, indicating, you know, there's a soft glow, I agree. I think those are glowy. Um, I'll swatch them on my arm so we can take a look at, you know, them compared to the other ones, but let's just put it on the face for a moment just to kind of see how it looks. So I'm going to use a very soft brush for the um, coral because it is bright and uh, I'm, as we have again, ad nauseum, I'm pale. So I'm going to use this color here using a uh, Chikahoto brush. This is a KZ02. I would mention that the KZ, the Chikahoto brushes are going up in price. Everything's going up in price this year. So uh, it seems to me. So uh, you, if you're interested in these brushes, I would suggest getting them soon. Now that's a very soft brush and you can see already, <laughs> this is very bright on me. That's fine. Um, so I'm gonna buff it out as you know much as I possibly can here. Just a little trick, if you ever get a look like this where you feel like it's too much and you're like, well, that's just too much blush, um, take a damp sponge, damp beauty blender or something, and you can actually just kind of take some of it out. If it's really bad, if it's really too pink or too deep or whatever, you can actually like, you know, remove some of it and take, put more makeup on, but I think that's fine. It's just a very bright, bright blush on me. We're gonna take far less and put it on the other side. This is why I use a very soft brush. Okay, so this is the way I would apply it if I'm gonna use this shade. Beautiful, really nice. A little too bright on this side, but that's okay. But it's a beautiful shade, brightening, has a luminosity to it, really, really pretty. I think that looks, I'm just pulling my hair back so you can see it. Yeah, I think it's a lovely shade. Again, bright for me, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, um, we'll take the KZ03 and let's use the other shade, the, what they're calling Pesh, and use that as a highlighter. Now on me, it actually does show up a little bit on my face, not a lot, but if you were looking for a no makeup makeup look, you can see there is a little bit of color there. And in fact, if I put it over the other blush, it tones it down. That actually combination is very pretty. Yeah, I love it. The thing about Chanel is I like most Chanel products. I worked for Chanel a long time ago. Um, if, you, if you haven't watched my channel before, you wouldn't know that, but I'm a big fan of Chanel products. Usually they're, they're very good, but I, what I would say is again, this will work for me um, as, as a highlighter definitely, 
But also, I'll use this as blush. And, and the way that I'll use it is on the days that I'm using like the Chanel Number no. 1 foundation, which is more like a tinted, it's not even a tinted moisturizer, it's like a diffusing foundation. Um, this on top of it with just a little bit of mascara and a lip balm would be perfect. But on anyone with a deeper skin tone than I am, this is going to be highlighter. This is going to be, or a very shimmer blush, but no real pigment. I mean, I still think it looks beautiful on the face, but I just, you know, the, the, the pigment's not there. If you were wondering, I am wearing the Chanel uh, Ultra Latent foundation, which is a matte, more coverage foundation. I did that because I feel like that fits better with this collection because of the velvet lipsticks. The Chanel Number no. 1 um, is a very light, ethereal, tinted, moisturizer, diffusing kind of foundation. And it's not like you can't wear velvet lipsticks with it. You can wear whatever you want. But I feel like the, the heaviness of the lipstick and the lightness of the foundation, for me, doesn't really go. Uh, especially since I have more mature skin, you can see the imperfections in my skin with the Chanel Number no. 1. I'm good with that. But with a deeper lipstick, I just feel like it looks unbalanced, if that makes any sense. Um, all right, so let's try the shades here. So you guys can see, here's the coral. And as you saw when I put it on my face, it's quite bright. It does have a soft glow. It's very, very pretty. I'm gonna put that next to the, um, this is the Pesh in the Illuminating blush that came out as part of the La Paza collection. So you can see it. The La, the La Paza one, the Pesh, is much more uh, peach orange. This is uh, the new one, which is coral, actually does look more coral, it's pinker. But the finishes are similar between the Illuminating Blush and the Soft Glow, which is interesting. All right, let's put that next to the Brune in the Illuminating Blush that came out as part of the Mediterranean. Um, this one is what I use as bronzer. It works really well for a bronzer for me. Yeah, it's much deeper, more of a terracotta color. Beautiful shade, like I said, I use that as bronzer on myself. I'll probably put a little bit of it on today so you can like sort of see a finished look before we do lips. Then let's take the Shane's. This is the one from like last year, I think. It's an illuminating blush and it has, I would say like a combination of the Brun and maybe the coral, like you get like a pinker shade. But it's definitely deep. It has more of illumination than the, the brown, in my opinion. Both of them are called illuminating blushes. All right, let's try the print temps here. We'll go with the blush side first. This looks very much like the coral. Very similar shades. In fact, I'll put them next to each other. Yeah, very, very similar. So if you like the print temps and you didn't get your hands on it, these two are very similar. In fact, on the face, I don't know if you would tell the difference between those two. That's really interesting. All right, now we'll take the highlighting side of the print temps. And you can see how that still works as blush on me because I am so pale. But I do really like this shade. I think it's a really pretty, very light blush for me. Or if I'm, you know, going for a highlight, I can use it for that as well. All right. And then let's take the Pesh, the new soft glow, and see how that looks next to the print temps highlighter. Yeah, it's it's considerably lighter than that. So it's lighter than what Chanel considered a highlighter as blush. There is there is color there. It's very, very, very light. Very, very light peach. But that gives you an idea of the differences. And like I said, the new coral one is very similar to the print ups blush side. 
Okay, put a little bit of brune on as um, some bronzer. I think you can see how it works really well as bronzer for me. So let's talk a little bit about these velvet lipsticks. So these are the Rouge Allure Velvet. I call them uh, pop tops because Chanel always comes out with these pop top lipsticks. And um, you know, there, there's all different kinds of shades. I have many of them. This is an original like just CC one. So it's just got the CCs on the end. Then you have the Camellia ones that have the Camellia on the ends of the, the lipstick, that velvet. And then we have the other velvet, which was the Lion Head. Again, popped up. And then this year you have the Comet. And I do love these types of lipsticks, I admit. They're just easy to open and I just, I don't know, I just like the pop top. I just think it's a cute idea. This little Harper is in the background, you can probably hear his chain, his uh, collar rattling because he's trying to get comfy. So the shades I picked up were 138, 158, and 108 and 118. So I got the lightest shades and then I got some of the ones towards the the deeper end, but kind of like in the middle. I didn't get the deepest shade. Um, and like I said, I showed you all the swatches on IG. I'll post it again here so you can see all the different shades. Anybody who's watched me for a while probably already knows the shade that's my favorite, but let's see if you guys can guess. All right, so these have 18 month shelf life again. And let's start with the lightest shade. The lightest shade is 108. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce the names, guys because today I'll just screw them up. Um, just, it's not that day. So let's start with 108. These velvet mats are very comfortable if you're somebody like me who doesn't do well with a dry lipstick, with a matte lipstick, with a lip, liquid lipstick, you'd be fine with these. Um, this is the 118. I think it really depends on, you know, if you like a creamy matte or a creamy velvet. Uh, if you can handle that, these are going to be fine. They're very, very comfortable on the lips. They give full coverage immediately. Really, really pretty. Um, one of my favorite uh, foundation. One of my favorite um, formulas, actually, from Chanel, because I don't like most velvet lipsticks, except for there are a few. Um, Lisa Eldridge was the one that came out with the one that I liked originally, and then since then, many others have followed. But in the beginning. <laughs> There were very few. It, I think the velvet formulas have really improved over the years because I think people realize that, you know, the people that were buying these lipsticks oftentimes were older and your, your lips aren't as plump. And a very drying lipstick is, is A, not comfortable, and oftentimes it doesn't help you look your best because it can actually just settle into lines and that's not a good look. So here are the shades. 108, 118, 138, and 158. 158 is definitely one of the, the deeper shades. It has like a, a reddish brown. It's got a, a cooler tone to this. This is a red, but it definitely has a little bit more of that. I don't know, like it's not a it's not a true red. It has more of a mm, pinkish undertone to it. I actually tried it on. I was like, oh, okay, this is something I would wear. This is 118, which is just a beautiful kind of terra pinky brown. And then this is 108, and 108 is my favorite. Uh, it is, you know, very much a brown pink shade, which is my favorite. Today I'm just gonna go ahead and put the, the 108 on so you can see it. Like I said, this is my, uh, my favorite. Um, not a surprise for people who have watched me for a while. I tend to go towards these pinky brown shades. And there is 108. This has like an earthy brown, but with some pink to it. It's really nice shade. It feels very comfortable on the lips. Um, the formulas in here are really good. I think some of the deeper shades, like the deepest shade almost had a plum undertone to it. It was really kind of interesting. And I admit, there was a part of me that wanted to pick up all the shades in the collection because I just love the way this formula feels and I thought they did a good job with the shades. I thought they were all very pretty. But I don't need that many lipsticks. I don't wear 
that many lipsticks, especially now. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna bring this lipstick on my trip, but I don't think very many people are gonna get to see it because at my conference, everyone has to wear masks 24 seven. And you know, you can take your mask off to eat, but I'm probably not gonna wear a lipstick um, because it's gonna transfer on my, ma on my mask. The thing I might do is put something like this on and blot it until the point where, you know, there's no more transfer uh, and wear it under a mask because, like I said, I just don't want to just transfer on the mask all day. That'll just be, you know, annoying to me by the end of the day. So, you know, that's why I didn't pick up all the shades. I actually was like, wow, I really like, I really like all the shades, but it just isn't, it would be a, a, the best decision for me right now because if they'd go bad before I got to use them all. So I'm trying to be more uh, judicious uh, in the things that I pick up, not because I don't love them, but because it doesn't make sense for me to have eight lipsticks that I'm not gonna wear uh, before they go bad. So uh, what I would say about this collection, the blush is beautiful and I really do think it has a soft glow to it that is stunning. If you are, um, someone who likes this tone, this sort of pinky coral tone, this is a beautiful lips, this is a beautiful blush, and it looks really stunning on the cheek. I have to be very careful of it because I am so pale, but I still think it looks really nice uh, on my skin. It's illuminating, beautiful, just stunning. And then I used the Pesh over it, and again, for me, I think that makes a really great look because I think this almost acts as a highlighter, a little bit of blush. I think it's really, really pretty. But I don't know exactly why they call this a blush. You either need to make this a deeper tone and more pigment or call it a highlighter, one or the other, in my opinion, because um, it just it doesn't make sense. I am, you know, uh, I am pale and it, it barely shows up on me. It makes a very, very light blush, which is fine, but it's too light to be really considered a blush. Um, and this, this coral tone is really beautiful. Like I said, it looks very similar to the print temps, which I love. Um, and actually the two of these together looks very much like the print temps combo, which is the blush and the highlighter. Although the highlighter and the print temps is actually deeper and more pigmented than, than this blush, um, as you saw on the swatches. So, but I think the combination is similar. And the Print Temps is one of my favorite duos because it looks beautiful on the cheek and it works on a lot of different people. Um, so what would I say about this compared to the Chanel Number no. 1 and the La Pazza, the Mediterranean? Uh, that's difficult because they're very different products. In the Chanel Number no. 1, you have the balms, the lip and cheek balms. I did buy all of those, but I feel like those will be something I can use more often because I'm gonna use them on my cheeks and my lips. And I feel like they could just stay in my lips and then I'm, I'd be good to go with a mask on top of it. These lipsticks are, you know, velvet lipsticks. They're, they're deeper. They're meant, in my opinion, for a more makeup look, like, you know, a full makeup look. I generally don't wear a velvet lipstick with no makeup on the rest of my face. You absolutely can. I just mean I don't. So the lip and cheek balms, I think I'm going to use more often. That's just me. Um, the blushes in here I think are great, and I'll definitely use these. This one I'll actually probably use all the time. On the days I'm wearing my Chanel Number no. 1 foundation, and I just want a little bit of illumination, a little bit of color, and walk out the door. So that, that actually will work really well for me, even though there's no pigment here, or very little pigment. Um, this one I really love. I think the shade is beautiful and the glow is gorgeous, but it is very deep for me, so I will have to go in very light which I've done with other ones. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the La Paza collection, the two blushes that are in there, one I use as a bronzer. <laughs> and the other one, again, I have to go in light. So, you know, of all the blush shades, this one works the best for my skin tone, but I would say it's really a no makeup look. If that's what you're looking for, there's nothing wrong with that. I do that a lot then it's this one. The other ones all have some pigment, all have some shade to them. They're a little bit different in shade. The Brune is definitely more of that tar terracotta. I think they're beautiful, but I do think they're different. And to be honest, I would have put the La Paza illuminating blushes with the velvet lipsticks. Like I feel like they fit better and I feel like these fit better with the, with the balms, but you know, they're just, I mean, 
Wear the makeup the way you want to wear the makeup. All this stuff works together well. I'm wearing the Mediterranean eyeshadow very lightly. I'm wearing the Ultra Latent foundation. So you can mix it up as you, as you see fit. I just feel like these blushes are softer and lighter. Um, maybe they wanted to, to sort of balance it out with the velvets because I think the velvets are pretty deep, pretty rich. Um, and the, the, the cheek products are soft and more of a glow. Just my take. Um, but honestly, they're all good. The only thing that I would say is like a negative is like I said, this is really not a blush. This is more of a highlighter, but the formula is good. <laughs> the pigment's not there, but the formula is great. Uh, lipsticks are great. Love this velvet formula. Love the pop tops. Uh, and love the four shades that I picked up. The other shades are beautiful as well. Nothing bad to say there. So overall, I think Chanel just hit it out of the park with all their collections this year. The La Paza, the number one, and this comic collection have all been excellent. Very few things in those collections that I would say don't buy. The only one I would say don't buy is the, the stick, the Chanel like glow stick. I just don't like that product. I've just come to terms with, I just don't like that product. But everything else has been excellent. So no, no real, one fail out of you know, how many products I can't even, can't even remember how many products there are now. Um, so yeah, I'm very impressed with Chanel. The next collection I think is the Tweeds collection from Chanel, um, which is gonna be interesting to see how people will respond to that one. But I will at least say that the design of the Tweed eyeshadows is superb. I think that's it today, guys. Um, more, more to come. There's more releases every day. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon.